Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 15, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shah. Thank you for being here. We are living in changing times, and change is not always easy, as our current state of the world is showing us. And I want to acknowledge, first and foremost, that this is challenging for a lot of people out there. It is scary as well. I know myself included, a lot of astrologers, we have been saying for years that there are big changes coming up for the world and for society. And while all of us have our own way of understanding it and describing it, I know for me in particular, I have been talking about a shift in power, of world power. Changes don't happen easily. Normally we have to identify what isn't working and we as human beings we like what's predictable we resist change and things sometimes need to come to a place where they are right on the surface for us to be willing to do the work that change sometimes requires and that is the case now I know that 2020 is a year that changes our path it changes our trajectory and we are right in it we're in the thick of it right now so there are a few things that we can talk about in the context of this week especially because this is such an important week as part of the larger changes and as part of the larger context if you look back at the videos i did for 2019 for 2020 the year ahead videos that i did i spoke about how much of what we are seeing in the world right now is the kind of sky that we saw at the time of the Protestant Reformation. And I've actually been looking more at, uh, at this, diving into it more deeply. And I will talk about this in the Saturn special video as well, but I do wanna give you a little bit of a heads up, even though that's coming up later this week. It was way back then, about 500 years ago, that Saturn and Pluto met in the sign of Capricorn. And that denotes a shift in world power, what we understand power to be. The Protestant Reformation represented a profound shift in consciousness. It represented a shift in our understanding of the divine, or we can say God, and our relationship to God itself. It was Martin Luther, who is sort of the icon of the Protestant Reformation, who said, that God isn't found in your churches. It is found in your love for each other. This was revolutionary. It was truly something that we as human beings had not contemplated before. And it is this very notion that is at the root of the way that we understand power today, the way that we have organized the world today. And so now fast forward, here we are, right? Earlier this year, Saturn met Pluto in the sign of Capricorn once again. And this represents another shift, certainly in world power, as the Protestant Reformation spoke to how the world changed, but it is rooted in a shift of human consciousness. It is rooted in a shift in the way that we see ourselves as expressions of the divine, our relationship to the divine. That is the true source of power. And so we had this monumental connection in the sky of Saturn and Pluto that took place back in January, right around the 12th of January. But because this is such a powerful, pervasive, longer term transit, you're not just looking at the events of right then. You're looking at how it comes forward, how it is that this shift begins to reach out into the world and into society. How is it that people are responding to what is changing? How is it people are now understanding power? So I'm brought to the quote of Martin Luther. He said, God isn't found in your churches. It is found in your love for each other, that that is where the divine resides. Wherever it is that we show love to others, that is where we connect with divine power. And that is part of what 
it feels as if we're being asked to do. On the one hand, uh, as a collective, more and more of us are asked to go within, to be still, to be silent. You know, I have been sharing with you on social media events of mine, my spring tour, lots of events are getting canceled at the moment, although not all are just yet. And that's okay. There's a collective yearning now to be still, to go within, to know ourselves as not only expressions of divine in and of ourselves, but there's something else that is ultimately rooted in our love for each other. That is part of the motivation now. And this is ultimately where I see power shifting, this awareness of our interconnection. You know, I often say that I think it is incredible that we manifested the internet. If you think about it, what that says about human consciousness, because the world that we have created, I mean, everything from the planets and as they're discovered to the, the way in which technology evolves, these are ultimately mirrors, right? Just like the sky, astrology is a mirror and it shows us ourselves. We interpret it in light of what we bring to the sky, but ultimately what is revealed is what it is that we believe about ourselves and what it means to be human. You can see this in the ways in which different astrologers choose to interpret the sky, but also we can see this in the things that manifest in our world, like the internet, what was called the World Wide Web. I think it still is. But it is profound to think of how interwoven that web actually is. This leap of human consciousness that allowed all of us not only to know ourselves as connected and interconnected, which is what spiritual teachers have been saying for a long time, but to have this tangible thing that yet isn't tangible, right? The internet is a real thing, but it is also a digital thing, which means it is of energy and uh, electricity, which isn't necessarily something that we always think ourselves of being able to hold and to touch. But it has changed the world. It has affirmed our connection to everyone and everything. And so right now, when we look at what was taking place in January, now we're moving forward and what is happening is we are starting to move towards alignments that are about bringing forward that change, bringing forward that shift. Remember, 2020 is also a year of a lot of retrogrades and retrogrades are powerfully karmic. What happens during retrogrades, it's like it's time has come and it tends to feel more intense. During retrogrades, a planet appears to be closer to the earth than it might otherwise be magnifying its energies. Well, we just got done with Mercury retrograde it is going to be at the start of the week that Mercury direct, but still in shadow, will move back into the sign of Pisces. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But all of this is to say it is now, and especially what has been happening, but what happens this week that ends up serving as a key moment, bringing forward that energy, helping us to understand and point the way to what that next shift is going to be for humanity. But that next shift is ultimately rooted in consciousness. We cannot manifest something externally in our world before or until the consciousness within has shifted. We as humanity had to get to that place where we were willing to not only be willing to interpret the word of the divine as it was conceptualized at that time, but also to decide what that relationship is going to be between us and a higher power for ourselves. To have the audacity to do that was absolutely revolutionary. And so now here we are, we are at this point in humanity, we are at this week and this is part of that shift that is taking place. Change isn't always comfortable. Change can be scary, but ultimately what it does, depending on our choices and our adamant dedication 
to love and wisdom, to being a presence and a force of love and wisdom right where we are. We can embrace change to make us better, to help us to move in a better direction individually, certainly, but collectively as well. We will have Mars activate Jupiter right around Thursday this week and then next week Pluto. So Jupiter and Pluto are moving into alignment. It is going to be in early April that the first of three exact connections of these planets are going to take place. And I do feel and I have been saying that it is going to be Jupiter and Pluto meeting that is going to end up being a huge characteristic of this year that is going to serve as how it is that we bring forward that energy of Saturn and Pluto. But more than that, Mars is physical. Mars is very visceral. Now, Jupiter is an interesting energy in and of itself because it is Jupiter right now moving through the sign of Capricorn that is not strong in that sign. And of course, Mercury retrograde, right? Coming back to the Mercury retrograde season, which began in the first days of February, is going to go right to the end of this month. Right now, Mercury is moving through and moving into the sign of Pisces. Now, it's interesting because I had this um, conversation with a friend of mine, Andy. You have seen him on my channel before. He is uh, possibly the most brilliant astrologer that I know. Um, I know how much I value his interpretations. And so we were having discussions around how the vehicle with which the shift is taking place, these changes in our world is happening, happens to be a virus. And I am of the belief that when we look at things like viruses, right? Like, yes, change and the kind that transforms societies. Absolutely, we can look at Saturn. We can look at Pluto. But the very nature, the pervasiveness, right? The way in which you can't see it, you can't touch it, but it, it, it has a way of sort of melting into wherever it goes. Um, the very nature of viruses is such so that it connects with the archetype of how we understand Jupiter, for example. But it's interesting because Andy was talking to me about Mercury. He said, yes, Jupiter is a factor. It's an activating factor. Mars right now is an activating factor. But when we're looking at things like health, you've got to look at Mercury. And another friend of mine you've seen on my channel, Akila Moon, she had an interesting post recently as well around this connection between Mercury and health and what it is that we can understand about how it is that health is being thought about, being experienced in the world. And so Jupiter right now, not in a sign he likes to be in. He's not strong in this sign. And then we've got Mercury. And Mercury is also in a sign where Mercury is not strong, doesn't like being in this, isn't able to not only bring forward his best energies, but maybe even has challenges. You add to this the layer that the energy of Pisces and Jupiter are connected because Jupiter is the ancient ruling planet of Pisces. And it is the energy of Pisces that also speaks to that, you know, unseen, dissolving, communal uh, and communion quality. And so you put these together and it does speak to where it is that we are right now. Pisces is an energy also, it is an energy that speaks to isolation. And more of us are being asked to isolate. And yet, why are we doing it, right? Why are we feeling inspired to do this? It is ultimately out of a love for each other is what is motivating actions now. And that is very powerful. That evokes the very spirit that changed the world 500 years ago. And we are now on the precipice of that again. And so Mars will meet Jupiter later this week. And that is going to bring intensity, right? It's going to bring feeling certainly to the surface. But it may very well also heighten fear and 
heighten a sense of uh, hyper awareness around COVID-19. It is going to be next week that Mars will meet Pluto. And that is also an extended energy because you have to remember Jupiter and Pluto are close to each other throughout the year, but are moving towards a peak moment. So it isn't just that Mars will meet Jupiter and then, you know, sort of taper off, but rather the energy will be extended right in the next week. And of course, Saturn changing signs at the very beginning of next week, right? Keep an eye out for the Saturn special because I'll have a lot more to say about what I'm talking about right now and so much more because I do think it is Saturn ultimately that will shift the energy for us. That is part of what we are moving towards. That is part of what is helping us to understand the next seat of power, the next seat of the soul, to borrow Gary Zuckov's words. And so now here we are, and it is going to be as we navigate later into this week that some of the energy of uncertainty we're feeling, it is going to be heightened. But here's the thing that is also happening. It is going to be right around Wednesday that the sun at the very end of the sign of Pisces, a sign connected with faith as well, is going to speak with Saturn just before both of these planets change signs. It is when a planet travels to the very end of its sign that it's moving through that not only is it that the very energy of that sign gets heightened and more concentrated, but its integration with the planet does as well. And so it is going to be this very moment as both Saturn and the Sun are at the very end of their respective signs that I do think this is going to be some voice of stabilization, some sense that things can be more grounded, that we don't necessarily have to live in the space of fear, which is decidedly not grounded, but that there are practical ways in which we can take action to feel a greater sense of stability, insights into what that could look like for us. And this is also an opportunity for us to take into consideration, again, the ultimately stabilizing power of the way in which we are not only interconnected, but we are immersed in each other. We are all, you know, swimming in the same divine waters, is what Pisces likes to remind us of. And I do think that this is going to be a sense of a light at the end or a sense of some stability there. It is going to be the next day, right around Thursday, that the sun will change signs, moving into the sign of Aries. Now, this marks important, uh, an important shift. On one level, it's the beginning of the astrological year. It is uh, considered International Astrology Day as well, but also... This is that sense of fresh energy, that sense of embodiment, a, a spiritual warrior or a fighting spirit that starts to come in. That gives us a sense of initiative and a sense of some momentum, which I think can be very helpful. But remember, we are still in times where we are being asked to, to pay attention because power right now is shifting and what is most powerful is what is happening within us. And I do think that for a lot of us out there, especially with Mars meeting Jupiter, this is going to be an opportunity to get really honest with ourselves about our own energy. What energy do we bring? Where is it that we are going to be a part of greater love and greater wisdom in the world? Or where is it that we are going to give into sort of our our lower impulses. There's no power in that place. There's no love in that place as well. And again, as Martin Luther said, God is found in our love for each other, which is what is being inspired now. And what I love about this week for us is exactly that, exactly how it is that love is being inspired now. You know, it is in moments like this, we get to see the truth of what's really in us. Collectively, yes, but individually as well. We are in 
times of a, you know, I call it a shift. We could say it's a revolution, right? It is a revolution to see yourself differently, to change your consciousness, to be part of a changing world is ultimately an act of revolution. Now, is that revolution going to be rooted in love and wisdom? You will know if that's where you are, but also your own barriers to it. What I do know is that power is found in stillness, in beingness. And this is something that we're all being inspired to. It's like collectively, as humanity, we know this to be the case, which is why so many of us now are being called to be still, to stop, to allow healthy isolation to take place, knowing that we are safe with ourselves. It's often said that if you really want to change the world and the world would change if more people meditated, right? Why is that? It's because when you meditate, you get in touch with something that is essential, that is eternal, something that we all share. But meditation doesn't necessarily have to be something very formalized, right? Or structured the way that I describe in the body and the cosmos, but rather you being present, you being willing to be here now with your feelings, with your uncertainty in a place of acceptance, that in and of itself is an act of meditation. It is a, an act of being present with the sacred itself. Now that is love, that is wisdom, that is power. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you are inspired, please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It does mean so much. And of course, if you would like to know how this sky this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Saturn specials should be up by the time that this video uh, is posted. I know that they'll definitely be up for superstars. They may be available for download as well by the time this video comes up, if not within hours or within a day or so. So do be on the lookout for that. But yes, Saturn specials for each and every sign. Looking at Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius, the previews and uh, the overview for everybody will be up on YouTube in the coming days and on social media as well. So I hope that you find value in that. I hope that you love that. But um, we are in such a powerful moment right now. And I do think that Saturn moving into Aquarius at the very beginning of next week is going to change things for all of us. And that certainly includes as part of our own individual journeys. And the key thing to remember, and I touched on this in the monthly videos as well, this energy begins intense. And that is sort of the characteristic of this time because it will be Mars that this week meets Jupiter, next week meets Pluto, the week after that meets Saturn at the very beginning of a brand new sign. But this is where we point the way. This is where we get that understanding of what we are moving towards. And uh, my hope is that this video and the special horoscopes I create in some way help you in your awareness and your alignment with greater love and greater wisdom. And so, yes, Saturn specials, they uh, should be ready and they should be out there for you. Now I have some new books. I want to give you so much gratitude, so much, so much gratitude. Uh, my new book, Prayers to the Sky, um, is the number one new release in New Age Astrology. And just thank you. Thank you for making it a number one new release. It is your love. It is your trust. It is the way that you resonate with my work that has blessed my life in so many ways. So thank you. It's just such a... You know, it's just so deeply meaningful to me that what I do has value in the world and has value to so many people. And for that, I'm so very grateful to you. So yes, Prayers to the Sky is now in the world. It now belongs to everybody else. It is no longer mine to hold. Uh, it is out there in the world and in the universe and Prayers to the Sky um, it is deeply personal, certainly, but it, it gives you insights into how it is that I cultivate a relationship 
with the planets, the astrological planets, the mythological planets. And I hope that um, it is this book that in some way reminds you that you and your life are an expression of love and wisdom, are nothing less than divine expression itself. And this is something the ancients understood. This is the root of astrology itself. And it is a very recent phenomenon in astrology uh, for astrology to be separate from spirituality, to be separate from religion. This move of astrology as a blueprint of the psyche is incredibly valuable, certainly, but it is very much a modern way of understanding the sky. We look at uh, the great mystics who have lived, who have walked this planet. Many of them were astrologers or they used astrology in some way. And so my hope is that this book with the way it is inspiring, yes, but also practical, Prayers to the Sky reminds you of this, not only sacred connection, but relationship and expression that we are. And so thank you. Thank you for giving me another number one new release. I'm so grateful. And I hope you love it. And when you read it and you love it, and please leave your positive review on Amazon, uh, in the Amazon reviews. Uh, and I appreciate that so very much as well. Thank you. So here is prayers to the sky. Prayers to the sky is right here. I mentioned the body and the cosmos. This was also a number one new release when it first came out um, in New Age Astrology. And I mentioned this uh, just earlier when I talked about meditation. It has meditations for each and every sign. Again, I hope you love that. And my next book, The Universe is Wise and Loving. Uh, this is going to be available as an advanced purchase with tons of free gifts uh, valued at over $200 um, through my website, NadiaShaw.com, over the month of April. You'll get a signed copy, free gifts, and all of that. You can learn more about that at TheUniverseIsWiseAndLoving.com. This will be available uh, to the world. It will be given to the world, available on Amazon and wherever books are sold. August 22nd, so we're going way into the summer, but August 22nd is when it officially launches in the world, but you can get the advanced copy three months earlier. So this is the universe is wise and loving the nodes of the moon. That's what this is about. I go through each sign, I go through planets and aspects, uh, and so it is quite, uh, quite the overview on understanding the nodes of the moon in your chart and uh, just like you did with the first the other books that i've mentioned the body and the cosmos prayers to the sky i hope you absolutely love the universe is wise and loving and that it is part of an affirmation and reminds you of how it is that we can choose to embody and be a force of love and wisdom in the world and in our own sphere of influence to the people that we are around uh, as part of our lives and our lived experience. So that is the intention behind all my work and the fact that you resonate with it, it just means so much. So thank you. And I do have the Equinox event coming up next weekend. You can still sign up for it. I will be teaching two classes in one day. So we are going to have a Saturn changing signs party. And then we are going to have a class uh, on Saturn and aspect to chart points and planets. And then we are going to have a class on Chiron, uh, Chiron through the signs and houses. So this gives us a chance to look at the energy of healing, yes, but also how it is that Saturn ultimately can be utilized in our own personal natal charts and by transit as well. So we're going to have a lot to talk about and we'll have a lot of fun online. It's going to be a full day, I, I'll tell you, but uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Live events outside of online events, well, as you can imagine, they're all kind of up in the air. I will mention Astrology Rising, CostaRica.com. Uh, that is a big event that is coming up in Costa Rica in May. But of course, to be very straightforward with you, Things are a little bit tentative, but I do know how committed Kaipacha, the organizer, is, how much he's listening to people and wanting to have this uh, go forward. And 
if there is any possibility for it to go forward, it will. So uh, he's deeply committed to that. And so there's a lot happening in the world, yes, but at the same time, there are certain truths that are eternal. And there are ways in which we can interact with the world and with each other that ultimately allow us to feel like we can be at peace with ourselves. And so I would love to meet you in Costa Rica, but I know that whether events are online or in person or they're postponed or whatever the case may be, in perfect time, in perfect time, and that this is a temporary time. The shift is much longer, but at least in the immediacy, this is a time uh, that is ephemeral. And it really is Saturn changing signs that is going to show us how things are changing, where we are going, how we can find stability, where it is that we can find grounding and certainty uh, within ourselves and within the world as well. So I'm really looking forward to talking about that with you. Be on the lookout uh, this week, hopefully early in the week, because I have so much to say. I'm like just bursting with all these ideas uh, to share. But be on the lookout for that uh, on YouTube and of course Saturn specials on my website, NadiaShaw.com. And thank you. Thank you. Just with all my heart, I thank you so much for sharing this moment with me at this kind of time in the world. Thank you for sharing your sacred journey with me, for seeing me as part of that, and for wanting love, wanting wisdom, wanting to affirm that, wanting to embody that. That desire in and of itself can be part of what changes the world for the better now. Thank you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.